Could I begin by asking you when you were born, please? The 20th of March, 1937. And where were you born? I was born in Valenciennes, in the north of France. And was your name at birth Joe Saint? No, it was Joseph Sentnersfer. Thank you. So that doesn't sound a French name. No, my parents were both from Warsaw and had settled in and married in France. And did they do that long before the Nazis? Yes, they did that in the 1920s. They came to France. My father to the Sorbonne, and then as he was finishing his education, he sent for his fiancée, my mother, and he uh, married a civil wedding in Aubervilliers, which I think is just a suburb of Paris. And I assume he intended to stay in France. Oh, yes. Oh, he, in fact, he had already applied for French citizenship when the war broke out. So what did happen then when the war broke out? You were still very young. Yes, uh, I was uh, uh, three when the Germans invaded France in 1940. So my, my father was employed, was an engineer employed in the locomotive industry in the north of France. And there were many Polish workers in factories and mines in the north of France. And uh, he, he, he had settled there, he decided, he, he left Poland because of anti-Semitism. I see. And then what happened after that? How did he end up here in, in Britain? Well, uh, he was called up by the Polish forces. He had already served in the Polish army when he was at university in Warsaw. He was part of a cadet force in 1920 that fought against the Bolshevik invasion of Poland after the, the Russian Revolution when uh, the Bolsheviks had tried to take back the Baltic states. Interesting period in history today. And, and how old was he when he was called up then? He, he was born in 1898. Right, so yeah. he was over 40 when he was yes, called up. Yes, I mean, I, I think I came late in their lives. But they, I know that, that because of the war, they decided not to have any more children because they didn't have any any place to stay really when they, when so they he moved. So he was he was called up. He was called up by the Polish forces in France, and he was a second lieutenant. And my father had decided that we should move to some safe place away from the the front, which was approaching through uh, Belgium. Uh, but uh, during the course of our escape, we escaped, I remember it was in a furniture, some kind of furniture van with other families. And I've been back to the house and stood in the entrance and seen the stairs. I, I fell down the stairs when we were leaving, I remember. These... To, uh, you know, three-year-old memories are only dramatic moments. That was one. And escaping in this van was something else. And somewhere along the line at, at a station where the Polish troops were going on to a train and my mother was saying goodbye to my father, uh, another officer approached my father and said, what are you doing saying goodbye to your wife and child for? Get them on the train, uh, we're leaving the country. And that's why you didn't hide in, in that's France? That's why we didn't go to our safe... The safe house, of course, was somewhere in the south, which would have been under Vichy, which wouldn't have helped. <laughs> right, yes, you'd have been arrested. Yes. So that saved your life? Yes. And your mother came then here to Scotland? Yes, we came on troop ships. Uh, there were two Polish liners, the Stefan Batory and uh, this Jan Sobieski were Polish liners. And they anchored off the French port of Saint-Jean-de-Luz 
near Biarritz, and the French fishermen ferried the Polish troops and any wives and children that were with them, they were ferried out. They had only to ferry out military. And so my mother apparently wore an army great coat with me underneath, carrying me. And so she had quite, you. quite a few Polish wives that my mother kept friends with throughout her life uh, escaped on these ships. And they took four or five days to sail from uh, Saint Jean de Luz out into the Atlantic, avoiding U boats. And they came into Plymouth, I think, on the 25th or 26th of June. I have all these dates written somewhere, uh, which uh, I think are precisely noted in a previous recording that I made of my story. It's amazing. And what about the rest of, of your extended family? Do you know what happened to them? Ye yes. Well, my father had a brother and a sister. The sister stayed in Warsaw, so she she disappeared in the ghetto. My father's brother escaped to, to Białystok with his wife and daughter, where they were, of course, arrested by the invading Soviet troops then, who had, had invaded Poland. Uh, they were given a choice of becoming Soviet citizens or remaining Polish. They decided to remain Polish were then arrested and transported on cattle trains, uh, goods trucks, to Siberia and to slave labour. Uh, they, they were with many other similar families who were in slave labour until uh, Germany attacked the Soviet Union and then they were free, and they travelled through what was then Georgia and Persia. Uh, and after the war, they ended up in a displaced persons camp somewhere near Paris. And from there, they went to Australia. And that was where my father found them, through the Red Cross in Australia. Right. And all that happened because they were Polish, not because they were Jewish. That's right. And then my mother had two brothers. Uh, one was last seen in the ghetto at the uprising, the Jewish uprising. In Warsaw. In Warsaw. And the other one had got married to a communist and went to the Soviet Union before the war and just disappeared. Don't know what happened to him. And were you conscious you were a refugee? Not at all. No. Not until I came to a function with one of your members who was a family friend or her parents had been friends with my parents and she said she was going to this uh, AGR meeting and I forget the subject but she thought it would interest me and I said oh yes I'll come along and then suddenly people told me I was a refugee <laughs> where were you from you see because I came from the west end of Glasgow that was like might as well have come from the Soviet Union <laughs> so there I was and uh, well I became a member and here I am and what about your, your mother? You must have been aware that she hadn't been born in, in Scotland. Oh, yes. Oh, no. I knew my mother's story. She, but, but, you know, as I child, I, I wasn't probing enough. And so there, there was more. I, I did learn a lot and just listening to my parents. But, you know, I didn't ask the questions. And then she died and... Too late to ask the questions. And and how did she? Do you know how, whether she liked it here in Scotland? How did she cope well, with being here? <laughs> she coped here. I mean, we were alive. <laughs> <laughs>